Hello, my name is Sean Moore, and this is my first video. So um, I'll be talking a little bit about my intentions on why I wanted to make this series. So basically, my videos will summarize media, mostly books, that I've been consuming and provide some thoughts and analysis. My goal is to provide a free outlet for the public to engage with literature and philosophy. I felt a distinct lack of this in my daily life since I left college and I sorely missed it. In addition, this is a mindful attempt to cultivate a longer attention span for myself and to work on my writing and reading. So you can expect me to cover topics such as philosophy, anthropology, sci-fi, photography, pho photography, <laughs> film, nature, and video games. My videos will be through my own particular lens. I will try to reference other authors and challenge myself to try to analyze my works deeply. However, it is nearly impossible to know what my own lens looks like because it's the result of my years of enculturation. So keep that in mind while listening, and I invite other interpretations and disagreements or questions. So let's get started. So my first book is Wanderlust, A History of Walking by Rebecca Solnit. I chose this book because a recurring theme of my own life was the desire to escape, be it to escape and walk in the woods when I was growing up, or to retreat into digital worlds and games, or to escape into the anonymity of city crowds. I thought this book might provide some insight into my own desire to escape, and it might lend me a sense of kinship with others when I normally felt isolated. And the book does offer that to the reader, but Rebecca Solnit also takes us down her own path that expands what I thought walking meant and also ended up teaching me a lot about writing as well and history. So uh, Solnit begins the book by talking about the undertaking of writing a history in general and acknowledges that this is her own particular version of a history. Walking is an activity that is taken for granted, like breathing or eating. However, the reasons people walked has changed over the ages. Taking walks used to be something that only the wealthy did. For others, walking was just a part of work. Other people, walking actually was unbeknownst to them, maybe a form of giving themselves power or resistance, such as a woman being able to walk alone in a city. Walks are can be political, such as pilgrimages, someone such as Peace Pilgrim who walked the United States in the name of peace, or even... Um, Civil rights marches um, in the U.S. and other places around the world. In our current day, walking is dangerous for others. People who jog in neighborhoods, um, sometimes people now walk on treadmills, and people meticulously measure how long they walk for with step counts. What, what does that say about our, our being now? <laughs> so, as you can see, there's a lot there about what walking is. It can be a lot of different things. So, this book really makes it clear in the first chapter that Solnit wants to choose a particular path, her own. She can't really choose anything else. It must be her own. And she's going to follow it from start to finish. And that's what the book is. So uh, as a result, other paths will be left untraveled, thinkers ignored, erasures made. But this is a central metaphor for Solnit. We tend to think of the goal of thought, philosophy, history, uh, more as a map. The goal is to create a map where the, there's a God's eye view of the entire space. But her writing is equivocally not that. 
we are walking with her down her path. And to her, metaphors of walking and writing are key. She kind of says that writing and walking is the same thing or very closely related. And many thinkers walk. Sentences are like paths that our eyes follow. The writer is like a guide leading us a particular way. Solnit tells a story about how she submitted a idea to her publisher that she wanted to make a book that hammered home this idea of hers. And it was to have all the text laid out in one single line from start to finish um, to show a path of a story. Uh, Unfortunately, it was turned down, but there seems to have been a compromise made because in this book, at the bottom of every page running from the beginning to the very end is one single uninterrupted line of text, Um, and it actually offers a different path through the book, like literally, but also... um, also the ideas presented there sometimes contradict what Solnit says in the main body of the book so that's very interesting and I actually enjoyed that although I did ignore it for most of the time while I was reading the book coming back and looking at it again reminds you of what you read above and also shows different different points of view So, for example, I found one in the first chapter that's sort of a tongue-in-cheek counterpoint. Uh, It's a quote from Voltaire who um, he insults Rousseau, who is, Rousseau is the first uh, person that we really focus in on in the next chapter and he's kind of the beginning of walking culture for this book but this quote is from Voltaire um, really poking fun at Rousseau so it's just a funny um, bit of different perspective and uh, to keep in mind all the other perspectives that can be about walking so here's the quote sir I have received your new book, written against the human race, and I thank you. Never was so much intelligence used to make us stupid. While reading it, one longs to go on all fours. That's from Voltaire to Rousseau on the discourse on the origin of equality.